Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and one of the questions I'm asked very often about board games is what are games with good rule books and what are games with bad rule books? And it's often something that I mention in reviews myself. So it's hard for me to find maybe the perfect rule book, although I think they exist. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to show you examples of things that I think should be in a good rule book. Uh, so I'm going to just go through a list of things that I think are good rule books and show you examples. Now, when I did these examples, I just pulled rule books from games that I have sitting around at this point in time. So I'm not necessarily saying that these rule books are amazing and or bad either way. I'm just trying to show you good examples of what I think should be in a rule book if you're making it for a game. So let's get started. I think it's very important for a rule book to tell you exactly what comes in it, but also pictures of it. It's actually very discouraging when you get it and there's a list of things, but it doesn't tell you how many there is. So it will say 48 artifact cards and I have to either guess what they are or figure out that there's a 48 deck of something. Here it just tells you they're numbered very clearly. This is what's in the game and this one goes even farther by saying here are the advanced mode components. Another example of this here, we have the contents, the things that are in the game. It shows you each one, tells you very clearly what they are. This way, if a rule refers to a specific piece, I can simply turn to this page and say, that's the piece, that's the card that they're talking about. Just as important is showing how to set the game up. Every game tells you, every rule book tells you how to set the game up. But it's really important if there's a picture, and especially here you can see there's a number. It says place this here, and it's number six. And then it shows you where that is on this board. And this is extremely helpful because not only can you follow the instructions on the way through and set up, but you can look at the picture to make sure that it matches. And having a picture in a game of how the game is set up is really useful. Having this setup with nice numbers, or even in this particular one where it shows you what to set up, but then it shows you pictures of the items you're setting up. This makes setup much easier and makes the whole rule book, it starts off on a good note. It's really handy when the rule book has a nice, quick, summation of what the game is about. It tells you this is kind of what you're doing over the course of the game. It's a quick way to read and say, okay, this is the core concepts of the game. Or maybe just a, here it shows you the goal of the game. This is what the goal of the game is. And this kind of sets you up as you go through the rules one at a time and you say, okay, this is what I need to do, be doing over the course of the game. I always enjoy when a game comes with some concepts at the beginning and it tells you this is how cities and supplies work, this is what dice and rims, it's telling you this is going to be mentioned a lot over the course of the rules. Here is what that means. If you understand these core concepts, you understand how the game works. Now I don't necessarily have to have these at the beginning of the rules. They can be introduced as the rules go by, but clearly delineating some of the main features of the game really helps out. So each game is going to have a series of steps that it needs to follow. So I like when it tells you that. Each player's turn. One, draw artifacts, blah, 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 blah. Two, perform an optional action, blah, 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 blah. Here are the actions you can take. Here's how things go. End of round. Now that's a very simple one. There are games that have much more complex rounds. And when you have clear steps, this is what you do on your turn. It's a very helpful thing. This one seems extremely obvious and yet so many games don't do it. Having an example of what you're doing, especially with pictorial references. So you can see here, it's showing you how to flip a card in this game. Here's a bunch of additional play examples here with pictures. They show you here in a diagram and then explain what's happening. Some games even go so far as to have an entire game or the first whole section of a game printed out in the rule book to help you walk through it. This sort of thing is incredibly helpful and sometimes can and make the rules come to life in a way that just reading the rules does not. Even 
even more importantly than just a normal example, showing how the score at the end of the game is very handy. You know, many times a game will say you score this for this column or this for this row or whatever. And when you show a finished state of a game and then show how many points that finished state gives you, it's really handy. Again, this shows how something works that does it, in my mind, a whole lot easier than just reading it from a book. Most games come with cards, and so therefore, I need to know what everything is in the cards. And it's so incredibly useful when they show a picture of the card, and they show all the parts of that card, and say what it does. Or if it's a player board, or whatever it might be, to just know exactly what the different things on the cards mean. It's very clear, this is the cost of the card, this is how many points the card gives, whatever it might be, very, very useful to have. Not only is it handy to have a scoring example, but how to actually win the game. Now you say, that's obvious, yes, but a lot of games kind of waffle on this point. For example, what if there's a tie? What if there's a tie if you're fighting for area majority in something? You need to think of all the different possible ways and clearly delineate how to win. And it should be usually at the end of your rule book, but even at the beginning of a rule book, like for example here, it talks about winning the game. This is a handy thing to have at the beginning because when I'm teaching a game, this is what I'll start with. Here's how you win. Everything a player does after that point will focus on that. When writing a rule book, you know how to play the game, but people who, who play it, they might know how to play it after reading a rule book, but what should they do? Having strategy tips in your thing, now this one seems pretty obvious, it's showing the uh, kind of a bell curve, but having this sort of thing in a game just is very handy. Many times when playing a new game, I'll read the strategy tips to all the players from the rule book because they give us kind of a focal point. This is what we should do. Here's some strategy tips here. You know, just kind of, hey, this is not only how to play, but here's how to strategize a bit. It's just really handy for new players to the game. Having a reference on the back of the rule book, and the back is important because in the middle of the rule book it's difficult, having a reference of all the different concepts in the game is a very useful thing. And especially if you have a little reference guide for each player, even if it's just the rounds of the game, this doesn't have to be in the rules. In fact, it shouldn't be. It should be a separate card or something, and there should be more than one. There should be enough for one for each player, and it should be something manageable that they can have in their area. And there's a lot of different concepts to games. Having a reference guide to quickly look at so you don't have to search through the rule book is very helpful. Games are going to come with lots of cards and lots of different special actions in them, and I want to be able to look up in a section and see what they do. Assume that people don't know how a card works, and games that come where every single card in the game is explained and how it works, that's a really handy thing to have in the game. Special actions and detail, even if it just repeats the card a little bit, uh, if there's any possible sort of problem that's come up in, in play testing, it might come up in the final game. So having a special section in the book that says, this is what you do in this case, that's a really handy thing to have. And if you have terms, you know, in your game, it's nice to have them here, even if they're mentioned elsewhere in the rules. That way, if I come across, what does interact mean? And I'm like, what does that exactly that mean? You can come right here and it explains what it does. I'm a big fan of figuring out who did a game and what role they had. And so, uh, first of all, if you have a story about how the game came into being, I love having that in a game. I also like having full credits. Give people credit where credit is due. And I like to look through these and see who did the graphic design, who did the development on the game. Things like that are just a nice gesture. And yes, it takes up a section of the rule book and part of the rule book, but it comes across as something that people will enjoy. The rule book can be a nightmare when playing a game. It is certainly the most dreaded part of a game for most people. I play through 
thousands of rule books and yet still I'll open up a new one and go, Oof, here we go. And other times I'll open up a rule book and I'll say, wow, this is fantastic. If you are designing or writing a rule book, and I will grant that that is an incredibly difficult task, these are concepts that I think should be in a rule book. Maybe you have something to add? Let us know in the comments below something that you'd like to see in an excellent rule book. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell and you've been watching The Dice Tower.